Hello everyone, welcome to Gladius. Uh, Warhammer 40,000 Gladius Relics of War, to be exact. That is a long title. Dang, Slytherin, I get that you make some decent games, but could you shorten the title just a little bit? Anyway, we're here today to talk about Gladius and how it works and see if it's any good. Now, I do have to clarify, I got this game for free. This is a free game. This is being released three days before its actual release date. Per my embargo, it goes live July 9th at 800 BST. So, it'll be live shortly after that time. Now, what is Gladius? I'm going to call it Gladius because, oh my god, saying Warhammer 40k Gladius Relics of War every time I want to say the game's title would be ridiculous. Gladius is a turn-based uh, strategy game in which you take the role of either Necron Space Marines, Imperial Guard, Astra Militarum, since they're making us say that now, or Orcs. It is a mix of combat and city-based management across a planet that is determined to kill you in which you manage cities, research new technologies to unlock new units or build lesser units faster, and then proceed to attempt to take over the world. The world of Gladius is described as a golden garden paradise. Bullshit! This is a freaking death world and we all know it. The sheer number of things ranging from Men in Iron, the Castanale robot specifically, to Catachan Deathstalkers, Crude Hounds, Enslavers, and so many other things that want to kill, murder, maim, or destroy you is beyond belief. Uh, the, win uh, the win conditions are very simple. Either complete your quest chain, which each faction has a 10 quest, quest chain, that there are different quest chains based upon your random playthrough. Sometimes you'll get... This particular chain I'm on right now. Other times you'll get a different one when you're playing the orcs. I don't know how many there actually are. I haven't managed to play, play through enough games to find that out. You either complete your quest chain or you annihilate all of the actual player factions. Now the creatures of the world, such as the enslavers, uh, this particular type of space marine is a part of the quest. The, Psyche, the Cyanugian wasps, they're just literally going to murder everything because that's what they're there to do. The things like the Necrons here, or the Astra Militarum down here. Imperial Guard, I'm just going to call you Imperial Guard, deal with it. Um, because it's so much easier to say. Are the actual other factions who are competing to either complete their quest or annihilate their foes. Now that much said, I would compare this game to Fallen Enchantress or Warlock 2 Exiles. I know there will be the comparisons made to Civiliz the Sid Meier's Civilization, but I say no. Civilization has a much simpler combat where this tries to emulate a long-term campaign in the tabletop gameplay format for the current edition of tabletop. Let's talk about gameplay. City management first. Because this is kind of where you start out is you make your first city. Here's my first city for this particular play th for this particular game. Uh, you will end up playing dozens and dozens of games. Now each city has a primary building function, in this case the, the scrap sheds. Uh, I can build more of these once I research scrap sets to build buildings faster. Furthermore, uh, you have things like Pile of Daka to make Orc Boys and Mega Knobs, uh, Commando Camp to make heroes. There are other structures like the Cult of Speed to make vehicles. Every faction has different structures that they use to produce their units, but each faction's city works differently. The orcs here, for instance, can put down orc fungus, which give me food output so I don't have to build the squig herd farm, I can just throw down more fungus. Furthermore, this causes orcs to heal when they're standing on it. And we can see my food output is starting to get a little low that I might actually start losing food, so I may want to do that soon. You can see the orc fungus noted by the literal purple and green fungus all across the map. Each one of these unit build slots builds at its own rate, so if I select something, it's building along with the other units. That's why you'll notice underneath each city is everything 
at all the build slots you have and what they're doing. Building multiple buildings will allow you to build things faster. Each city has different resources. Now you have your global resources, food, ore, power, research, and influence. These resources are shared across all cities. Orcs have a special resource called WAB. The WAB level is determined by your accumulated influence and the total amount of influence upkeep you are paying compared to how much influence you're gaining each turn. The level goes up to 5. At 5 you receive a full 25% extra damage. So you're encouraged to accumulate and not spend your influence very quickly and make sure you're always gaining influence. This unit, you're also all orc units require influence for upkeep, just to kind of throw you off. Uh, furthermore, each building has two unique resources. One is loyalty. Loyalty indicate it gives a bonus or a penalty up to 100%, as it says here in the description, based upon what you are currently working with. I'm going to move this over the mini-map because the mini-map is not terribly important uh, to really look at right now. Now, these resources are then combined. Furthermore, up here at research, you'll notice it says 136 is plus 66 a turn. What this basically means is, instead of doing a, I select this and I'm researching towards that over and over again, I can just switch and spend my research elsewhere and instantly get technology. I don't have to be researching something at the moment. I can save and accumulate and then research something that I want later. Each faction has 10 tech tiers. In the case of orcs, it ends with the ability to build the, uh, Ruther, the rut herd grounds where you can build squigs and later and upgrade it to build squig um bit the big squig i forget what they're called great squig i think is what it's called my apologies if i messed it up i haven't actually ever got to research level 10 but we're getting to why momentarily uh, again i would compare this concept to warlock 2 and uh, and in Fallen Enchantress, because just like Civilization, you claim districts, and these districts are where you build your buildings, and you get a certain number of buildings, and each district gives a certain bonus to those buildings. I would say that the city here is just refined. It's a very refined, very simple system. You know what each building's doing, how it's doing it, and what it's giving you, and then you know your city's population, the rate of growth, which is just a base rate. Uh, your loyalty and all the resources that city is generating and consuming. But I wouldn't really classify it nor the research anything special. They're just really nicely done, really well refined, and that's something you're going to find with this game constantly, is there's nothing terribly new, it's just well done. Now, unit design, I'm going to click on a unit here and show you, a uh, basic unit, let's take these tank busters I just made. So each unit has armor. Armor provides, according to this, 8% damage reduction. Each unit has hit points. Each unit has a morale score. Each unit has actions, movement, number of number of turns they can take an action, such as shooting, using one of their special abilities. Uh, each unit has a movement rate, and each unit has a level. And then you have all of their traits and bonuses. Now I have an unholy number of traits and bonuses because we've claimed a bunch of old world of old artifacts that provide global bonuses. But Normally, you just have a few traits. I can actually show it to you better here in the compendium. There's an actual compendium. So this is this is one of the hostile nature units, the arm bull. You'll notice that it has the traits rending and regeneration. You can also find out how much trait bonus the random things that the planet are still getting from ownership of different things. Or if you owned the unit, in this case, if I owned the unit, this is what I would get from it. So if we come over here to Orc Boys, we can see that. I have a technology upgrades are in blue, what they come with base is in white, and what they're getting from the world is in green. It's very useful to see exactly what a unit has and how it works. Item slots and cargo slots indicate items and cargo that they can carry for heroes. Sight is how far they can see, obviously, movement, morale, if morale breaks, you lose accuracy. Each weapon has an accuracy rating. The telling you how many uh, uh, its average chance to hit but, but the game does a very good job when you scroll over something though when you're looking at all this of just telling you exactly what that attack is going to do when it compares all of the numbers and it is ex it's an exact science so you don't have to sit here and number crunch if you don't want to it's set up for you to tell you exactly how it's going to work so when these guys fire at this predator 
he loses 10 hit points. When these guys fire at the Predator, he loses 12.5. Now, why is that? Well, this unit is experience level 1. Each experience level increases morale, increases hit point by 1 point, gives you 5% extra damage and 10% extra morale. So you notice this, this base unit has 21 HP. This unit has 26 and is a level 6 unit. You'll also notice that this unit is going to do more damage. No army, by the way, feels the same. Playing a different army genuinely plays differently. And I find that's a good thing. A few good space marines or a dozen Necron warriors can hold off tons of foes. Meanwhile, these little orc, ch orc boys with choppas who just got overwatched to hell. That is a mechanic. If, the, if you didn't take your action, you do get an overwatch. But these orc boys who just got overwatched are really, really good at melee, but don't expect them to do anything unless they can actually get to the melee. Blast guns are like flashlights, and while they do damage, you will feel the need to reinforce with more and more las guns in order to actually have them do realistically good damage. Now we're sprinting here because we're trying to get to an objective. Unit management is very simple. A 10-year-old can figure this out. And I don't mean that as an exaggeration. A 10-year-old can figure this out. Tell units to attack. You pretty much get the idea of what the unit's going to get from the attack and what's going to happen to the enemy because of it. And you move on. There's no complicated calculation that needs to be done. It's already done for you. As you can see, I moved in, they had actions left, I get overwatched, I take hits. As I mentioned before, these quests, I have to complete them if I want to win by quests. However, I must point out, if I fail these objectives, I lose. So, if, so right now I have no unit here. Now I have a unit here. If someone had claimed that point while I had no unit there, that's it. Game over. So you learn very quickly to get your to focus your quests if you're going to focus quests or if you're going to focus on annihilation you go for annihilation. You don't play in the middle going back and forth because you will lose that way. Resolution of each action as I said the it's not Slytherin is the publisher, excuse me. This is a Slytherin published game. The actual developers are I know I'm pausing the middle of a review because I'm looking up a name real quick because I wrote it down. I just can't see in my notes where I wrote it down. Proxy Studios. Proxy Studios has done a very good job of letting you know what's going to happen when you do stuff. A very, very good job. I cannot stress that enough. It is just excellently done. You know what's going to happen, why it's going to happen, and as the game plays, you know what's going on. Now, as you guys can hear from the sound design, I've turned this down to 35% and it's still really loud. Um, from the sound design and the music and everything else involved in the game, it is genuinely good. The graphics, while simple, you'll see down here that this looks like something out of like Dawn of War 2, maybe, on low settings. No computer I've ever had would struggle to play this game. The requirements are just that low. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. They have focused on refining the gameplay. If you can just, you know, get past the, the fact that you're going to be dealing with some simplified graphics, you can have a genuinely good time here. But if you wanted something with higher graphic fidelity and much higher sound fidelity, you're better off looking somewhere else. All the units basically have one or two combat sounds, um, maybe one or two different lines that they will say as a result of your combat resolutions, and that's about it. You can hear the wah when the orcs charge, you can hear the sound of bolters when they fire their little bolt guns, um, but you really shouldn't expect more than that, if I'm entirely honest. It's just not here. 
And that's the truth. It's just, it's not here. You're not going to have something more complicated than the most basic of sound. But the strategy layer is good enough that there is warrant to play this game multiple times. Because you, right now my strategy is how many orcs can I make. But later strategy, I might come back here and say, can I play a game where I only have heroes? Can I play a game where I don't build, where I only build a few orc boys and then switch over to more advanced, heavier units later? Again, city management, you're constantly reminded, hey, this needs to be done, hey, this needs to be done, but you're always given the option to skip. You can always just go, no, I'm not doing that right now. In the case of this city, there are uh, disloyal, which is causing production problems. And I would like for them to knock it off. But I also need a pile of DACA. So we're going to build a pile of DACA. Just so I can get somewhere else that can produce more that can produce more units. Particularly since I have to protect that city and the invasion at this point. Gladius, now that I've said all of this and gone through everything. Gladius is just a fucking well executed game. It's nothing super fancy. It's nothing that I'm going to necessarily you know, tell all my friends about because it's amazing and revolutionary and and changes strategy games on a level that like Dawn of War or Civilization did. But it takes the concepts it uses and the pieces and it's just fucking solid. In a world where we are constantly given games that are incomplete, have bugs, promise features are missing, or we'll add them later. Oh my god, I hate that excuse. We'll add it later. Gladius doesn't do that. Gladius says, here's our game. It's in a completed state. There is nothing for us to do later except for add expansions. Thank you. I can honestly say, I just kind of wanted that in a AAA title. And while this is not a AAA title, this is, I, I don't mean to, if, if Slytherin wants to take this offensively, they can. They are not a AAA studio. I do not expect AAA title from Slytherin. What I expect is what I have here. Solid gameplay, a game that is complete at launch, a game that is well tested, that is mostly bug free, that's incredibly stable. And considering this is their first foray into what I would call three-dimensional strategy, where it's not super simple graphics that I could get out of the 80s or 90, out of even the, like, 80s, where I just see, like, a, a, a piece of artwork moving, a very simple explosion in sound, and then it shows resolution with stats. Instead, I actually have some real visuals, uh, which are well done. They're not, they're not super high-end. Like I said, but they're well done. They go through some effort to make each army feel unique and different. The Space Marine tanks operate very differently from Orc tanks. The basic Imperial Guardsman operates very differently. Running into each of the enemy, each of the planetary enemies on this death world, this is not a garden world. This is the one problem I do have, is they call this a garden world, and I will call horse hockey. It's Warballs Fiora marches up here to eat, it, eat, to eat a tank. I will call horse hockey. This is not a garden world. This is a death world. The sheer number of things here, from insane guardsmen to killer wasps, giant, angry, I don't even know what to call those, sentient gorilla insect hybrid... The enslavers present that nearly wiped out the entire galaxy. Katachan uh, death stalkers. That the thing I just killed. Men at all, men at, men of iron. All this stuff that's here that will murder fa face you. Yeah, no, this is not a garden world. This is the opposite, which makes for an enjoyable challenge because honestly, the. At this point in the game, the I, I, I can fight really well because I have a boatload of units and I have a lot of units who are very well experienced that I've protected 
and made sure that they got to that experience level. But this is where the AI starts to run into a problem, in my opinion, and where the game starts to kind of run into an issue. The things on this world, the creatures and the the in driven insane space marines and driven insane imperial guardsmen they are much more lethal and will wreck your face compared to the actual faction ai this game is clearly made with multiplayer in mind as the faction ai just is not very good even giving them the highest advantage which only really gives them more loyalty, so they don't have to worry about loyalty. But even giving them that highest advantage, the faction AI is just... It feels like it's struggling to even compete. And I'm sad to say that. But it is the one noteworthy thing about this game. Is if you want a real challenge, you're going to just have to put multiple AIs against you and fight multiple AI, or you're going to need to fight... A, fight against another person or you set up the world the the world enemies to just be super ultra lethal and play with your friends against the world enemies you can play this as a strictly pvp uh, pve style game in which you just want to fight the world and that's fine uh right now we're playing on what's called tur on, on turn 95 at this point I would say that I have gone through, I don't know, what does Steam say over here? Uh, 12 hours. I've played this game for 12 hours. Um, and I've only played on the smaller game settings. You can play with like 20 AI opponents. But I wanted to test out individual AIs and I wanted to see stuff on the smaller scale before I looked at it on the larger scale. And in truth... That's kind of how I feel about the game is it works great on a smaller on on the larger scale than it does on the smaller scale. When I was playing on the larger scale, the AI was genuinely competitive just because of the sheer number of things I had to put up with and deal with. Now that I'm playing on a smaller scale, it I can see the holes in the AI. I've only played on a larger scale up to up to 7 other factions. You apparently can play up to 10. Um I honestly feel like this is a good game. Is it $45 good? No. No, it's not. Would it be a $30 to a $40 game? Mm, 40s kind of stretching it for me. But I could see, you know, maybe giving it a, a, a maybe, you know, talking it up to my friends if this was like 30 bucks. Or if this was on sale, I would talk it up more. But as it stands, as is, this is not a triple A game. This is a single A or a B game. But because there's nothing new, there's nothing revolutionary, there's nothing risky or outside the box here. What there is, though, is a solid experience and a genuinely enjoyable game. Which is a good thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's my brutally honest review. Is it bad? No. Is it great, awesome, amazing? No. Is it good? Yes. If you need something to fix your Warhammer 40k fix and just have nothing, or are tired of all the old games... Or just you really need a strategy game, and you're dis and you're super disappointed like most of us are from Dawn of War three. This will get you fixed. Um, it genuinely will. But if you're not looking for a strategy game, if you're not looking for something in the turn based style, style. This isn't going to do anything for you. If you're looking for something new and revolutionary, 
that just changes the strategy genre as a whole, this is the wrong tree. It really is the wrong tree. But, I mean, maybe you just want a 40k strategy game that's good. Well, here you go. That's all I have to say about it. The the, the AI needs some up needs some tweaks and some upgrades to be truly competitive or truly monstrous. The game is good. It's nothing that I'm going to, you know, write home about and tell everybody you should go get 40k Gladius. Am I gonna stream this one? Probably. I mean I can rename the unit. It's not indicated that I can rename it until I scroll over their name and there's this option to rename. And I just click and it lets me do it. But, yeah, I don't have a lot negative to say about it. I'm just genuinely relieved to see a 40k game that didn't try to do anything stupid, crazy, or way far out there that said, what are some game concepts that we can do well, that, are, that we can master, and that we can come in and just make work. And that's what they did. They came in and they made it work. And did a good job. So overall, it's a solid game. It's a good game. It's nothing great. It's nothing amazing. But I feel like it's something that the 40k genre as of late is really lacking. I mean, we lost Dawn of War. We may not never see another Dawn of War title. We don't know. At this time. But what I do know is that I have a decent 40k strategy game that's legitimately kind of worth playing. That I have no real massive complaints or glaring issues with. That's a good thing. As you can see, I'm in an encampment right now just buying items for this individual war boss to make him a badass. But that's all I have to say about it. It's a solid game. It's definitely worth your pickup if it's on sale um slytherin did a great job of making sure to just let proxy whoops turn off the webcam to just let proxy build a game that they knew what they were doing and that they executed incredibly well there's nothing new here there's nothing super experimental there's no it's addictive it's fun it's legitimately something I have wanted in a 40k game for a very long time. Not necessarily like a, 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 war, a, a Warlock Exiles or a, a Fallen Enchantress uh, combat sim. But just a good, solid strategy game. And thank the heavens it's been granted. A good, solid strategy game is how I would describe this. And that's all I have to say. If you guys found this review helpful, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more by me, Fiora, you can subscribe. Seriously, slap the button. Tell your friends. Get our people. Drag them in here. Make them come see Fiora. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, please, please do so through Patreon. At the end of all of my live streams, I announce YouTube sponsors, people who have paid the $5 to get the extra YouTube emotes and the loyalty badge next to their name during live stream, and I give a special shout out to all of my patrons, particularly top tier patrons and the $10 patrons. So $10 patrons, you know who you are. I'm not going to read off all of your names. Please don't be offended, but I am going to say thank you. And to my uh, to to my top tier patrons who get to select a game who get to select a game once a month that I have to review or at least do a first impressions of, 
Uh, thank you, Floppadoodle, Jeffrey Perigo, Song of the Void, our, anon our person who wishes to remain anonymous, anonymous, and Michael Bones. You guys are awesome, and thank you very much. But I have a bunch of $10 patrons, and the little $1 patrons, you guys are, are, are just nice. Thank you for being just nice. But that's how I take care of a good chunk of my bills, and I want to say thank you to these people. Thank you. Now, that much said. Um, that's all I really have to say. If you want to take a look at the previous review, it's right here. Um, it's of a bad 40k game. <sighs> Inquisitor Martyr, why do you hurt me so? But, that's everything, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Good night, everybody.